Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This episode is about friendships. And I want to talk about friendships because they're one of those areas of life where we really do have the opportunity to live the voluntary life, to make our own choices unconstrained and follow our own desires about developing friendships with other people. You know, in in so many areas of life that we talked about on this podcast, there are such significant constraints on your freedom to choose to live the way that you want to. If you want to become an entrepreneur, you're going to encounter all of this red tape and regulations and so forth, and you may not be able to develop the business in exactly the way that you want to. You have to find workarounds and you have to work within these constraints. If you want to achieve uh, a level of financial freedom and save for the future so that you have, you know, more freedom to do things that you want to do, you have to deal with the problem of taxes, that whatever you invest in, you've got to make all these tax considerations. And you also have to deal with the problem that the currency uh, itself uh, loses value through um, printing of the money supply, through inflation and so forth. So there's all of these things, these constraints that you have to work within. But when it comes to personal relationships, this is really an opportunity for us to live and enjoy the benefits of voluntary choices and what a joy that is and what a thing to be relished. Sadly, even though friendships and personal relationships are the area where we have maximum freedom, it's often the case that people have a circle of friends or friendship circles that they find deeply dissatisfying and that they don't feel free in. They don't feel free to speak their mind. They don't feel free to express their feelings and so forth. And I've had the experience of being in a circle of friends or having a circle of friends where I realized that I didn't really feel free to be myself, to really um, enjoy those voluntary relationships to their full extent. So I'm really interested in the question of how to get the most freedom and joy from personal relationships and I'm really interested to hear um, your thoughts about this if you have feedback about this subject in general in this podcast I'd love to uh, read any comments that you have please do comment on the website and email me and if you have any thoughts about people who um, I should interview uh, who have interesting things to say on this uh, please let me know because uh, I'm this is something that is of real interest to me too And I thought I'd start off by talking about investing in friendships because you don't control or own your friendships. There are two people involved. The other person has their own feelings, their own desires, their own needs and so forth. But you do control your input into the relationship and you are responsible for your choice to invest in the friendship or not. So the question is, Where should you invest? Uh, What friendships should you invest in? And I think this is an important issue because many people find themselves with friends who they may have because of a sense of obligation or guilt or because maybe just because of um, the momentum of history that they were friends with that person for so long that they're still friends with them. And what I'd like to talk about is the conscious choice to invest in friendships. Now, investing in friendships can take many, many different forms. But ultimately, I think a useful way of looking at the most basic kind of investment that you make in your friendships is your time. When you spend time with someone, you are investing in that relationship. Your time is a limited resource. We've only got so long to live. So whenever you choose to spend some of that time with a particular person, you are investing in that relationship. Now, here's an interesting thought experiment for you. If you think about the time that you spend with other people in your life, regardless of whether this is at work and your friends or your family or whatever, however you characterize those people, who are the top 20 people who you spend time with in your life? I found it a useful useful exercise to write this down, and you might find it interesting just to think about, without any judgment of why or what the circumstances are, who are the 20 people who you spend your life with? You can think about the last six months or the last month, whatever makes most sense to you, but who are the 20 people who you actually spend your time with on a day-to-day basis? And that could be, you know, physically actually spending time with that person, or it might be that you 
have email correspondence with them the whole time or you're on Skype or you're thinking about them. But you're, from your perspective, who have you been spending your time relating to? Because the interesting thing about that list is that regardless of whether you call those people you know, work colleagues or family or friends, those are the 20 people who you are invested with. Those are the people who you've chosen to, for whatever reason, to invest your precious limited time with. And I think it's interesting just to, to look at that list and consider how many of those people you would call friend and what the quality of that friendship is. And when I say whether or not you would call them a friend, I don't mean whether or not you're known as friends to each other. I mean just from your own feelings Would you choose to spend time with this person if you didn't have to because of family commitments or work commitments or anything else? Regardless of the circumstances, would you want to spend time just being in this person's presence because you found that it made you happy regardless of, you know, wanting to achieve specific things with them? So what we're talking about is... What's the quality of that relationship for you? Would you consider them to be people who, just in terms of your feelings, regardless of their feelings or their needs, do you feel happy spending time with that person? And I think it's really useful for oneself, privately and for oneself, to be honest about the way that one feels about these 20 people who you've invested your time with. There's a really good test that Guy Kawasaki talks about in the book Art of the Start, which he calls the shopping mall test. And he talks about when he's making a decision to hire someone, um, a thought experiment where he imagines being at a shopping mall and seeing that person across the mall. And he says there's three possible um, ways in which he can feel when he sees that person. The first is that he wants to, you know, call out to that person, run across the mall, make contact with them because it's a a great unexpected bonus that he gets to see this person and you know it's a real joy to see that person the second uh, response that he can have is he sees the person and he thinks that's fine maybe i'll bump into them and say if i actually if our paths cross i'll say hello and uh that'll be fine and the third response is that when he sees that person he realizes he really doesn't want to talk to them and he'd rather avoid them, you know, and actually go out of their way. And he says that when he's thinking about hiring someone, he only ever hires people who fit in the first category, where he would go out of his way to go and say hello to them if he saw them in a shopping mall. And I think that's an interesting measure of your own feelings. And the idea being that life is just way too short to work with people who you don't feel those kinds of friendly uh, feelings towards. And I think that's true with hiring people. And I think it's also true when considering whether or not you want to work for someone or, or work with, um, you know, with a team of people. So that is a nice measure of the quality of a friendship or a relationship from your perspective, your feelings. Another one that I like is imagining your phone ringing and seeing a person's name on the caller display and thinking about how positive you would feel about taking that call would you think, oh no, I've got to take the call, or would you? Would it be a really joyful experience? And another one that I think is also helpful is to look back on the interactions that you've had with that person, whether it's the last 10 times that you've met up or the last 10 emails or phone calls or whatever, and just think about, for each one, how positive was it for you? Just from your feelings, you know, did you come away from that interaction thinking that that was a positive experience or a negative experience? So what's the proportion of positive experiences that you've had with that person? And that can be for whatever reason that you determine it to be positive. You may find, you know, really challenging debates to be positive, or you may find just hanging out and and being with that person to be positive. Whatever you found to be a positive experience, um, you know, that what's the proportion in your last 10 interactions with that person? Because I think it's interesting to then look at these 20 people who you are investing your time with and to look at the relationship between how much time you are investing with that person and how positive you feel about spending time with that person. 
because there should be a really good correlation if you had the amount of time that you spend with a person on the x-axis and how you feel about spending time with that person on the y-axis there should be a really good correlation between those two variables and in terms of where you invest your time the interesting thing is where are the outliers to that correlation so for example if you if you actually plotted it and had for those 20 people a value that you ascribed to how positive you feel on the y-axis and some kind of measure of how much time you spend with them on the x-axis who would be those people who you feel very positive about but you don't actually spend that much time with they would be on the top left of that graph because those people i think are an opportunity for you to invest in that friendship for you to be vulnerable and pour positive energy towards that person to try and find ways to motivate that person to spend more time with you by finding ways in which you can make it as enjoyable as possible for them to spend time with you and by being generous with your goodwill and your interest um, in them and their needs so that you can motivate them to spend more time with you because you enjoy their company I know that in my life I've met people who I really have liked and I've really enjoyed their company and I have not made the effort to follow up, to invest the time, to actually develop that friendship. And I'm trying to learn from this and you know this is one of the things I'm thinking about is when I meet people or when I know people who I really like but I realize that I'm not really investing in that friendship, I want to be more conscious for myself about making a decision to invest in that friendship. Then there's those people who you already spend a lot of time with and you feel very positively about. They would be on the top right of that graph of time you spend with someone and how you feel about them. And I think those relationships are really the joy that you have in your life that you really want to preserve, that you want to do whatever you can to nurture, protect and preserve those relationships because they're the ones that make you happy. And, uh, you know, and that's one of the most precious things that life has to give. Then there are those relationships where you are spending a lot of time with somebody, but you don't feel positively about the time that you spend with them. So that would be on the bottom right of this graph. I think that's an opportunity to be really conscious about why you're investing this time with this person and whether or not you should divest from that friendship and rather invest your time with other people who you really admire and who you feel really happy in their company. I know that I have had long periods in my life when I've spent a lot of time with people who I've had a business relationship with where to achieve certain ends I've you know worked very closely with people who really I wouldn't choose to spend my time with if it weren't for that project that we're working on and I want to be conscious in the, in the future that, you know, ultimately, even though business relationships can, can bring great things and they can be worthwhile doing, ultimately, they don't make me feel happy. I don't feel joy working together with people who I wouldn't like to hang around with, regardless of whether or not we had this project together. So I think that area is one to be really conscious of and to think about, you know, why you are spending time with this person. Um, if you don't actually enjoy their company. Because it is your responsibility to invest your time wisely and to invest time in those relationships which you feel good about, I'm trying to be really conscious to reach out to those people who I like, to invest my time in trying to develop my friendships with them. And I want to be more conscious about really not taking for granted the great thing that I have with those relationships where I really enjoy spending time with that person and I have the chance to spend time with them. I really want to protect and nurture those good friendships that I've got. And I want to try and minimize the amount of time that I spend with anybody who I don't enjoy spending time with them. Because life is just too short. And this is one area of our lives where we really can 
lead the voluntary life to the full extent and make our own choices about spending those time with people who we love and people who we cherish. And that's what I think my responsibility is to myself, for my own happiness, and to my friends for being the best friend that I can be to them. So I hope that's helpful. I would love to hear any feedback you have. And thank you so much for listening.